We're back for our SEM prep race this weekend. Uh, there are three prep races this weekend. We do have the UA Derby. We will not be covering it, but you do have the UA Derby going on. You have a Bob Baffert favorites going out there. Um, before we take a look at this Louisiana Derby, our first 100-point race we've come upon. Uh, Caleb, any thoughts on uh, Baffert coming back in, uh, You know, his horse being moved over now to new training and becoming eligible for the Derby? Yeah, I suppose it's not that surprising. I think we all sort of figured that if the appeals process didn't go the way Baffert hoped, that these horses would be getting transferred. A little frustrating, maybe. It feels like perhaps circum uh, circumventing the intent of the rules, especially if they end up going back to Baffert after all is said and done. But uh, the only one I'd probably be a little concerned with is Messier. I'm not too sure that the other horses that were transferred are legitimate derby contenders. But it will be interesting to see how Messier performs uh, in his next race out for Ten Yachtin and what the connections ultimately decide to do after the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, very interested to see how this plays out. Again, I was very frustrated by uh, by all how this has all been handled. But um, I guess this is a little bit of horse racing. So we have a million dollars in the Great Louisiana Derby at Fairground this coming Saturday. Um, going to be a great race. Race number 12, 644 post time, going one and three sixteenths of a mile, 100 points available for the winner. Um, pretty much guarantees you when you finish second, you get 40, you pretty much get into the gate as well. Um, so we'll take a look at starting off number one, Silent Power. Hoping a pair here at 50 to 1. Um, horse ships in from Delta Downs, where he's been sort of competitive in some restricted stakes. I think the horse is extremely. Deep water here. Um, I will say it's not necessarily a huge bias play, but horses have definitely been improving uh, the last couple of days. Running on the rail, not necessarily winning, improving on the rail. So I think the rail is going to be pretty good, and speed has been pretty favoring. Um, but I don't know if this horse is going to do much here. I think it's way over his head. So I'm going to pass on number one. Uh, what are your thoughts on the two and the three? Yeah, it is exciting to be in the hundred point prep races finally. So now we're getting down to the uh, down to the wire. Zozo's the number two. This is a horse that I think is pretty much unquestionably the wild card of this field. The horse is undefeated from two starts, uh, ran a nice race at the fairgrounds here when breaking his maiden, going six and uh, six furlongs. Uh, stretched out next time out at Oaklawn to two turns and absolutely crushed an optional claiming field uh, for non winners of one. That was a relatively weak race. Barossa was an even money favorite to was beaten 10 lengths in a field that wasn't particularly strong. So I'm not really sure how good that field was, but the maiden race at Zozos one did come back pretty strong with the place and show horse, both coming to win next out and a couple other horses that have come out of that race to run pretty well as well. So I think Zozos is definitely the wild card. This horse doesn't seem like he should want to go a mile in three sixteenths based on the pedigree. That's very speed oriented. Uh, Dam was a sprinter. Lone sibling was a uh, pure sprinter, but the horse did win a race going a mile and 16th by 10 lengths. So some mixed signals here. And I think this is a horse you gotta let price be your guide. The number three is Call Me Midnight. So this is a horse that I tipped way back when now for uh, my long shot play in the Lacombe to made me some money that day. Unfortunately, I think that he doesn't probably get the pace set up that he needs in this race. In that Lacombe, you had a couple horses that were stretching out. Uh, surfer dude and a few other uh, horses that are more of the cheap speed variety and i don't think he's going to enjoy that contested quick pace that he got in the lecomte here i think he's a nice colt i really do and i think he'll run all day without question but i'm not sure he's going to get the pace set up he needs in here and i'm not sure how much money he really ends up taking he does have a bit of the layoff to contend with just overcoming or skipping the risen star last time but this is a horse that wouldn't surprise me if he wins he might be that good but i don't think he's gonna get the pace set up that he needs what'd you think of the number four curly tail so curly tail is an interesting one uh broke his aiden last time out 20 days ago so we're talking about a pretty recent horse here in that sense um interesting you know, dallas stewart what can you say everything anything can happen with him um I think it's worth a watch underneath. It's a closing style, huge kick. Um, but last race, you know, it was against the bias to Oklahoma in one one sixteenth. I think that if Epicenter maybe goes out way too far in front, I think this is a horse that can run up to like second or third, just passing tiring horses as other people try to keep up with Epicenter. Um, and I think they just sort of burn themselves out. Um, 
I do think you can definitely take a look at this horse with that extremely long stretch for an opportunity um, to be underneath. Not necessarily a winner me, but a horse I'm definitely will be using my tries and exact is. Brings me to the five, which is probably one of the most interesting horses in the field uh, based on just workouts. Uh, Kapuna is uh, you know, Brett Calhoun, Ray Lou Gutierrez. These two have been hitting it 20% together. Ray Lou is hot as you can be. Ran two bullet workouts recently, one with Hidden Connection, who was running in the Oaks earlier on in the card. So uh, I think you've got to watch race 11 with the Oaks and see if Hidden Connection fires. And if Hidden Connection fires and just speeds off and shows you that uh, she's real, I think this is a horse that you have to use. Um, if Epicent doesn't fire or gets tested a little bit early and, and maybe can't keep up with it, I think this is a horse that has been training extremely well with really good company. I love to see that top pair training together, especially coming into a race like this. So, of course, I'm going to be using, again, underneath, but I'm definitely going to have a, a little bit of a hedge win bet on this one. Uh, would you have the six and the seven? Sure. So I think the number six Epicenter is the horse that the race really goes through him, right? He's the horse that's in all likelihood going to be on the lead is going to be dictating the terms out front and is essentially going to say, catch me if you can. Looking at the rest of this field, I just don't see many horses that I think can catch him. There's not a ton of other pace in here. He was run down late in La Compte by Call Me Midnight, but that pace was certainly on the swift side. He got a much more relaxed journey on the front end in the Risen Star, and he won that race pretty much in hand. That was a good race. I mean, he beat Smile Happy, who's still very highly regarded by a lot of handicappers. He beat a Chad Brown trained Zandon. He beat, there was quite a number of runners in there that were pretty well thought of. Um, so I do think that Epicenter is certainly the horse to beat here. I probably won't be getting too creative and trying to find ways to go against him. And I'll have most of my bets most likely going through Epicenter. The number seven, Pioneer of Medina, this is one of maybe two horses that may decide to try to pressure Epicenter early. He did sit second to Epicenter last out in the Risen Star with Luis Ayas up and wasn't really ever a threat to the winner. He kind of ran second most of the way and then ultimately got tired and got passed by a couple of horses late. He is improving. He has taken small steps forward in each start. So this is a Todd Pletcher horse at the fairgrounds. I have a reason to think this horse takes another step forward here and improves a little bit, but I'm just not sure that he's going to improve enough to turn the tables on a horse like Epicenter. So this is a horse that I think could maybe play a pace factor and set up another horse, but I struggle to really envision a scenario where Pioneer of Medina can get the job done on, on the win end. Well, you want to close us out with the uh, last two runners in the field? Yeah, so Galt, I mean, this horse can't get out of its own way. Um, Holy Bull led pretty much three fourths of the race, tied and finished fourth. Uh, wasn't the pace up we were thought? Simplification was on the inside. Uh, simplification missed break. JJ was asleep at the wheel, and so he went and just tried to lead him around. Junior tried to make it all the way. Um, run the fountain, the youth. Obviously, the act, the act spill happened. Loses Junior. Um, Martin Junior back. Junior's back from Missouri. He took a little time off. Um, I don't know what to necessarily do with this horse. Uh, I will say the lost rider Van Dolph angle that people love to play, especially when you bring somebody back this quick, um, is pretty big here. So I think, you know, Bill Mott will bring this horse back unless he thought there was an honest shot here. Um, so I think it's going to be a horse that's going to set up pretty well. Uh, I don't necessarily know if it has the ability to stay up with them. I think it's, you're really going to have to be within two or three lengths of Epicenter to have any shot. Uh, but it's a horse that you, you have to take a second look at. And another horse where I'm going to be watching the earlier races to see how speed's holding. Because if, if we see speed's not necessarily holding us up, I'll take an opportunity here and maybe throw some money at this horse. And that brings us to running out the field number nine, Rattle and Roll. Um, Rattle and Roll you know, finished sixth in uh, in the Fountain of Youth, uh, one in the British Herdy. Uh, nothing's really come out of that race yesterday. It's really showed me too much. Um, worked this past week, though, with Smile Happy, fired a bullet, which I find very, very interesting. But again, this is, I love the horses working together, but why now? Why McPeak? What is McPeak trying to push here? And the outside of Fairground has just been terrible. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, Try probably to be fade this horse, maybe use a little bit of my tries. But uh, as you said before, I think Epicent this is Epicenter's race to lose. Um, who is your top pick here? 
Yeah, rather unimaginably, I had to go with the favorite here at the center. I just, I would like to take a shot against this horse, but I just think this, the pace scenario is just too favorable. Epicenter loves the fairgrounds, clearly. Two wins in a second from three starts here. Uh, was proven you know, to win in hand against probably a better field than what he catches today when in the Risen Star. I don't think the extra distance is going to be a problem for this horse, and I think he controls everything on the front end. Uh, Rosario sticks here. There's just a lot to like, and I'm not going to get too creative trying to beat Epicenter. What about you? I mean, I've tried. I went up and down, left and right. There's no way I could beat Epicenter. I think the horse, uh, I'm going to be a chalk eater. Horse has shown it can carry at a high speed, loves fairgrounds, loves to get out in front, and I don't think many horses can keep up with it. Uh, the figs kept getting better race after race after race, and the workouts look like the horse cycling perfectly into it. Um, I just don't see an opportunity necessarily to beat Epicenter here. Um, I'm not even going to give out a long shot. Uh, but I will be taking a look at a trifecta here. Uh, I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna put Epicenter on top, and I'm actually gonna use a couple bombs uh, underneath. I think Curly Tail, uh, who's gonna be probably every bit of thirty to forty to one somewhere in there, is definitely somebody I'm gonna be using using underneath. Uh, I think there's an opportunity here for Galt to come out of nowhere and show something um, after that accident, after spill last time. And the other one I'm going to take a look at is, is really going to be focused on what happens with Hidden Connection in the Oaks. Um, does it does she fire? Does she not? If she does, and you know, they've been really working together, I'm going to keep, use this five underneath as well, Kuna. I think there's an opportunity here for this horse to uh, run up underneath it and maybe get some, you know, a very short price, but get a 40 to one or a 30 to one right underneath. Did you have any idea for long shots? Uh, truthfully, I didn't. I, I think my opinion here was more that Epicenter would be very tough to beat. And I'm not really enamored with what I imagine the second and third choices are going to be here between Pioneer of Medina and Rattle and Roll. Uh, those are two horses who I anticipate will take the, you know, be the second and third betting choice in this field. And neither of them really do much for me. So if I was going to look for a play here, similar to the lines of thinking that you just said, Andrew, I would probably key a horse like uh, Epicenter over some of the longer prices that may get overlooked a little bit. I think you know, Dallas Stewart, Curly Tail, who you mentioned, I mean, is there a guy more iconic with blowing up the board of a trifecta in big races than Dallas? So I think that's a great horse to key underneath. I think maybe a horse like Zozo's, while I do expect him to take money, um, it's another horse that you could use underneath as well. So I'd be trying to play some type of vertical wager with Epicenter and then leaving out the, uh, second and third choices who just don't do much for me. So that's our, our great field of uh, eight here for the Louisiana grade two Louisiana Derby. I have to ask you though, Caleb, before we finish up here, um, does EZ, is there any chance that Echo Zoo loses the Oaks? I don't think so. I am dumb enough to have bet against her. And I think the Frisette and the Breeders' Cup and both times I walked away with lighter pockets than I walked in with. So I don't think uh, I'm going to be dumb enough to bet against Nick Zulu here, but they are three-year-old fillies and uh, she is you know, testing the fairgrounds for the first time and she's going to be one to five. So crazier things have happened, uh, but I'm not going to bet against her. <laughs> I will say I'm, I'm not necessarily going to bet against her, but I will be using in the All Six Picks Five, which came out pretty nice. It's going to be a little chalky, but I'm actually going to take an opportunity. The one shot I'm going to take in there where I'm not going to be looking at the chalk, I'm going to take Hidden Connection um, and see if I can put something together there for the Pick Five because they do have that nice All Stakes Pick Five for their 12 race card this coming Saturday. Again, great card fairgrounds this Saturday, 12 races. No, race number 12, Louisiana Grade Two Derby for $1 million. 100 points available here, 6.44 p.m. Eastern time, going one and one-eighth mile at the fairgrounds on an extremely long, extremely long uh, stretch there. Thanks again. We ask you to like and subscribe. Our videos will be coming all the way up to the road to the Derby, all the way through the road to the Kentucky Derby. Thanks. It's next week.